Stop raking leaves now. The shocking truth about leaf mulch and soil health science exposed. Are your autumn leaves secretly sabotaging your soil? Or, you know, could they be the missing key to healthier, richer earth? What if everything you've been told about raking, bagging, and tossing leaves was wrong? Today, we're exposing the biggest myths about leaf mulch and revealing what modern soil science actually says about its role in soil health, fertility, and plant growth. By the end of this video, you'll never look at fallen leaves the same way again. The Hidden Power Beneath the Leaf Layer When leaves fall, they create what soil scientists call the LFH layer, litter, fermentation, and humus. This is where the magic happens, where soil and organic matter meet to form a thriving micro-ecosystem that fuels fertility naturally. The LFH layer is alive with worms, insects, fungi, and bacteria, each playing a crucial role in transforming lifeless leaves into nutrient-rich humus. Leaves are nature's version of organic gold. As they decompose, they attract earthworms that aerate the soil and fungi that break down linen and cellulose, two tough plant fibers that most organisms can't digest. These microbes turn dry, crunchy leaves into a sponge-like material that holds up to five times more water than typical garden soil. That's why leaf mold, a product of decomposed leaves, is so prized among soil experts. It doesn't just improve texture, it transforms the soil's ability to breathe, drain, and store nutrients. Myth number one. Leaves steal nitrogen from the soil. This is, honestly, one of the most widespread and misunderstood gardening beliefs out there. Yes, decomposing leaves do temporarily draw nitrogen from the soil surface, but only where they directly contact it. Microbes need nitrogen to break down carbon-rich material like leaves, which is why they borrow some from the immediate soil zone. However, this effect is shallow and short-lived. The real issue happens when gardeners till large amounts of leaves directly into the soil. That deep mixing spreads the nitrogen drawdown throughout the root zone, and, well, that can temporarily slow plant growth. To avoid this, just use leaves as a surface mulch rather than a soil amendment. When left on top, the nitrogen cycle stabilizes naturally as earthworms and microbes incorporate the organic matter slowly over time. If you've already tilled leaves in and noticed sluggish plant growth, don't panic. Simply apply a high nitrogen amendment to rebalance the carbon to nitrogen ratio. For instance, dissolve 30 grams of urea in 10 liters of water and apply evenly across every square meter of affected soil. This provides an immediate nitrogen source for microbes, accelerating decomposition and restoring fertility balance. Interestingly, this temporary nitrogen drawdown can actually be beneficial when used strategically. Leaf mulch on the surface can suppress weed germination by creating a low nitrogen microzone, unfavorable for weed seedlings but harmless for established plants. So, used correctly, this problem becomes one of leaf mulch's best features. Myth number two. Oak and pine leaves make the soil too acidic. If you've been avoiding oak or pine leaves because you heard they acidify soil, you've been misled. Extensive studies, including long-term pH monitoring, show that adding these leaves does not significantly alter soil acidity over time. The natural buffering capacity of most soils prevents small changes in surface acidity from shifting the overall pH. So why do we often see bare ground under pine trees or sparse vegetation beneath mature oaks? The culprit isn't acidity, it's competition. Dense canopies block sunlight and intercept rainfall, while mature roots compete aggressively for nutrients and moisture. Once those leaves are removed from that competitive environment and used as mulch or compost, their acidity becomes irrelevant. In fact, both oak and pine leaves contribute valuable organic matter just like any other tree species. So yes, oak and pine belong in your compost and mulch pile. They won't harm your soil or your plants. Myth number three. 
Walnut leaves contain juglone and kill plants. It's true that walnut trees release a compound called juglone, which can inhibit the growth of some plants. But dose is everything. When juglone-rich leaves are mixed with other organic materials, their toxicity quickly drops below harmful levels. A blend containing just 25% walnut leaves with 75% other leaves is generally considered safe after proper composting. If you want to be absolutely certain, try a simple soil bioassay. Take a small sample of your leaf compost and sow 10 broadleaf seeds and 10 grass-type seeds in it. If both groups germinate normally, your compost is juglone safe. If germination is weak, just extend the composting period or blend in more neutral material. Within a few months, microbial activity breaks down most juglone residues naturally, leaving behind a nutrient-dense compost ready for garden use. So, here's the thing. Fungi are the real heroes of leaf decomposition. Because only fungi can fully digest lignin and cellulose, their role in converting dry leaves into soil matter is, well, absolutely essential. You can actually create this fungal-driven process right at home by making leaf mold, which is a slow, cold compost made entirely of leaves and moisture. To make it, all you need to do is collect your leaves, slightly moisten them, and seal them up in black garbage bags. Then, just leave the bags in a warm, shaded spot against a wall for several months, ideally through the summer. By the following year, when you open those bags, you'll find a dark, crumbly, earthy material that looks a lot like peat moss and smells just like fresh forest soil. This is leaf mold, one of the richest, most sustainable soil conditioners you can produce for free. Leaf mold doesn't just improve soil texture, it actually boosts microbial diversity, enhances moisture retention, and increases cation exchange capacity. That's the soil's ability to hold nutrients. It can even help restore structure in compacted clay soils or improve water retention in sandy soils. Honestly, there's simply no downside to using it. Myth number four, leaf mulch spreads disease. Now this one is, uh, partially true. If leaves are infected with fungal diseases that overwinter, like powdery mildew, leaving them in place can, you know, reintroduce those pathogens next season. But honestly, this problem is pretty easily managed with proper composting. When diseased leaves are hot composted, reaching internal temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, pathogens are destroyed. The easiest home version of this is to bag the diseased leaves, add just a bit of moisture, and place them in a sunny location for several months. The heat inside the sealed bag naturally sterilizes the material. Once decomposed, the resulting leaf mold is safe to use anywhere. For healthy leaves, decomposition in place poses no problem at all. The same microbial activity that feeds your soil also breaks down potential disease spores before they can cause harm. So, what about running a mower over your leaves? Well, shredding actually helps them decompose faster, but, you know, it can also create these hot spots of microbial activity. Now, on a large agricultural scale, this might release small amounts of nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas that's about 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. But for home gardens, honestly, these emissions are pretty negligible. In fact, shredded leaves make excellent surface mulch, especially when you spread them in layers about 5 to 8 centimeters thick. This allows for good airflow, moisture penetration, and a steady breakdown rate that really enriches the topsoil, all in a natural way. You know, every autumn, millions of tons of leaves are bagged up and sent to landfills. And honestly, that's a tragic waste of a perfect soil building material. Leaves are a renewable, free, and biologically active source of carbon. Whether you compost them, mulch them, or convert them into leaf mold, they return structure, water holding capacity, and long-term fertility to your soil. 
The only leaves that really need to be removed are those infected with persistent disease. Everything else should, well, stay on site, feeding the next generation of soil life beneath your feet. Science has spoken. Leaf mulch doesn't rob your soil of nutrients, it doesn't acidify the earth, and it doesn't poison your plants. When used properly, it's actually one of the most powerful natural tools for building soil health, reducing weeds, and maintaining moisture. All without spending a dime. So this fall, instead of raking your leaves away, recycle them right back into your soil. Your garden and the planet will thank you. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central, hit that like button, and share it with your fellow growers. Together, let's keep spreading real, science-backed soil wisdom and build healthier gardens from the ground up.